When you are asked to determine the implied domain of, an, of a function, there are really two things that you are going to look for. And whether they call it just domain or implied domain, it means the same thing. So the first thing that you always want to pay attention to are fractions. And what we know about fraction is that you cannot have a value of zero in the bottom of a fraction. Okay, we say that that just, it's undefined. It'd be like me saying that, you know, I don't have any zero cookies today and I'm going to give you two. Makes absolutely no sense to say two out of zero cookies. So we can't have a zero in the bottom of a fraction. All right, so the second thing that we look for are even roots. And typically, um, with this particular class, they will be square roots, but any type of even roots. And what we know is that we cannot take the even root of a negative number. And what you may have learned in other classes is that produces what we call imaginary numbers. Now, it's okay to talk about odd roots. We can take odd roots of negative numbers. We just cannot take even roots of negative numbers. Okay, and so let's talk about, let's look at this first example and we'll talk about what you do. So if they're asking you to determine the implied domain, you're looking for fractions or you're looking for square roots. And what I notice right off the bat is this particular problem has a square root in it. So I know that that is going to create an issue for the domain. Now, what you do in this case, there's going to always be something under the radical. So you're going to take whatever is under that radical and if it's just a normal radical, you're going to set it greater than or equal to zero. Because if we're saying it can't be negative, what that means is it needs to be positive. So in this case, I'm going to take x plus 8, and I'm going to say it must be greater than or equal to zero. And that is what helps me find my implied domain. So once you do that, then simply solve for x. If I subtract 8 on both sides, then I'm going to get x is greater than or equal to negative 8. Now, because they want my answer in interval notation, I've got to picture the graph, whether I draw it or just picture it in my mind. If x is equal to negative 8, it would look like that. Greater than negative 8 would go to the right. So in interval notation, this graph starts at negative 8. It touches, and because it just keeps going and going and going to the right, we, call it, we say that it goes to infinity. So that is what my domain would look like in interval notation. Now, let's talk about what if that radical happened to be on the bottom. So let's say we had the function g of x equals, and let's do a 5x, and let's put a square root on the bottom, and we'll go x minus 4 on the bottom. So in this case, you've got both issues because you've not only got a fraction involved, but you've got that square root and it happens to be on the bottom. So if we take both of those into account, then you're still going to take whatever is under the radical, but instead of saying greater than or equal to zero, you're strictly going to say greater than zero because you have to consider the fact that you cannot have a zero in the bottom of a fraction. So when you're thinking about the, um, up here, when you're thinking about the radicals, if that radical happens to be on bottom, the difference is whatever's under that radical, you're only going to say greater than zero. And then you solve just like normal. So in this case, I would get x is greater than 4, which if I picture my graph, Greater than means it doesn't touch 4, it's just shaded to the right. And so because it does not equal 4, even though the graph starts close to 4, we're going to put a parenthesis to say it doesn't touch it, and then it goes to infinity, just like that. Now, you could have a problem where you don't have a square root in the bottom, but you do have a fraction. So let's just take something like c of x 
and let's say that we've got a 2x plus 1 and then on bottom we just have something like 3x minus 4 okay now we could care less about what's in the top of the fraction that does not affect your domain as we mentioned up here with fractions it is the bottom that affects your domain and so in this case what we do is whatever's on bottom we're going to say it cannot equal zero and in a sense you did that over here when you didn't put the bar but since we don't have a square root this time then we can't we don't want to say greater than zero we're just saying the bottom cannot be zero so we say cannot equal zero and then we solve it so if i add four to both sides then 3x cannot equal four divide both sides by three and i'm getting x cannot equal four thirds now if you think of this graph what I'm saying is at four thirds there's a big hole in the graph X could be anything smaller X could be anything bigger it just cannot equal four thirds so if I have to write that in interval notation what I would say is that this graph starts at negative infinity which we never touch so we put parentheses it gets close to four thirds, but it doesn't touch it. So we put parentheses again. And then we're gonna put a union symbol. That just means it kind of um, jumps over that hole. Okay, it stands for the word or because we're getting a second part of the graph. So the graph starts again close to four thirds. Since it didn't touch it, I put parentheses. And then it goes to infinity. So that's what the interval notation would look like in that case.